All right, y'all, AEW Dynamite Review for March 23rd, 2022. First hour was good. The last half hour, 40 minutes, it sucked. Don't know what happened. Anyways, let's get to the first match. CM Punk versus Dax Harwood. Full start to the match, a lot of holds, chain wrestling. Dax goes for a diving headbutt. Punk's move out of the way. Punk hits a leg drop for a near fall. Uh, Dax hits a superplex off the top rope and a diving headbutt for a two count. Punk hits a diving crossbody for a two count. Dax hits a springboard powerbomb for a near fall. Dax counters a GTS into a sharpshooter, saying a little uh, homage to Bret Hart. Punk rolls over, locks an anaconda device. Dax taps out. It's all opening match. It's a classic wrestling match. And then at the end of the match, Punk starts doing the gesture for the world titles or for a title. And then the commentators, I think Shivani or Excalibur, was saying, oh, was he going for the TNT title, the tag team title, or the world title? Come on, man, he's going for the world title. So it could going to be Punk versus Hangman Page, looks like. Uh, double or nothing. All right, next up we got the eight-man... Tornado tag match, no disqualification. Darby Allen, Sting, and the Hardys versus Private Party, and the Butcher and the Blade. Pretty much brawling just outside between everybody. Jeff hit a clothesline on Blade, goes over the railing or over the barricade, and then Sting hit a Stinger splash on Isaiah. Against the barricade, and then they were out near the I think second floor or first floor, can't remember. But uh, Butcher had uh, Darby in like a power bomb power driver position, and he just swung him into the railings twice, and then threw him down the stairs. You guys remember when he was when Darby Allen was feeding with Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page. It was last year, the year before, I can't remember, but they threw him down like a couple flights of stairs. That's a brutal spot to take. Anyways, uh, we got so that's how they go into the breaks. Uh, Butcher threw Darby down the stairs, and then back from the break, we got Matt Hardy and Private Party on the stage near the announce table. Private Party had a double side effect on Matt to a table off the stage, and then Backstage where they sell the t-shirts and where all the food is and stuff. You got Sting, Darby Allen, Jeff Hardy, and then Butcher and the Blade. Jeff brings this giant ladder, like 20-foot ladder. He climbs up and then there's like a ledge. So he climbs on the ledge and he hits a swanton bomb on the Butcher and the Blade through two tables. And then Sting was holding him down while he did it. So Sting did the big uh, splash at Revolution, and uh, Jeff Hardy's like, it's my turn. And then back in the ring, Sting hit two Stinger splashes on Private Party. He goes for the third one, and he misses. And then Matt Hardy hits a twist of fate, and at the same time, Sting hits a Scorpion Death Drop for the win. This is probably the best match of the night. They just brawling it for the most part of it. It was the same thing at Revolution. And then, yeah, it was cool to see Jeff doing his thing. Yeah, like 40 years old, still doing crazy dives off the ladders. Classic Jeff Hardy. All right, we got next match. Brian Danielson and John Moxley versus Varsity Blondes with Julia Hart. Uh, um, uh, Moxie hits a German suplex on Griff Garrison back from the break. Moxie and Brian hit a German suplex clothesline combo. Brian hit a running knee and Moxie hit a paradigm shift. Brian does a stomp to the head. At the same time, Moxie griffs el elbows Griff in the head. And, and then Moxie put uh, Griff in a rear naked choke and Griff taps out. So throughout the whole match, Julia Hart's just sitting on the steps. He's like zoned out. So he might be turning the heel. Probably join the House of Black maybe or somebody else. She's looking at the crowd. 
And then after the match, Moxie grabs a mic and he says he's a lucky man and very blessed. Only one man whose opinion I ever cared about, and that's William Regal. To get a seal of approval, he had to go through pain, torture, and dislocated joints. This message is for whoever has what it takes to stand beside us. We ain't giving out no free passes. We need to reap down deep, in, deep inside of your soul and find that place where you love pain. It says if you want a badge of honor from the Blackpool Combat Club. So that's going to be their new name. That's a better name than Jericho Appreciation Society. And then he says there's only one way to get in the hard way. So be interesting to see who they're going to add to this group. Last week, it looked like it was going to be Wheeler Yuta, and he's splitting away from best friends. They had a segment in the back where he's pretty much done with them. So it could be Wheeler Yuta, one of them, and then we'll see who it is probably next week or a few weeks later. So, yeah, it should be – it could be a good group. We'll see what happens. All right, next up, we got uh, best segment of the night. Uh, he's always has the best segment, MJF. He says, Wardlow, it's such a shame you couldn't get the job done last week. Unlike you, I'm a man of my word. Unlike you, I honor my business agreements. We weren't good enough to beat Scorpio Sky. And then he says, uh, his message for CM Punk, he says, I had you beat at Revolution. Just like you had you beat at Chicago twice at Chicago. You decided to cheat to win. He says, there will be another match. I'm going to give you the most embarrassing loss of your entire career. And it won't be over until I go to your funeral and piss on your grave. So it looks like it could uh, he could they could meet again at pay-per-view in September. Not full gear, all out. So I'd probably save that match till September. Let's see. And then he says back to the under, other spineless coward, Wardlow. Called him a greedy little pig. Says, when I met you a couple of years ago, if it wasn't for me. Got to change this. Says, if it, oh. says if it wasn't for me, if it wasn't for the contract you signed, these people wouldn't know. Who the hell you are? I made you Wardlow. How do you repay me by costing me the most important match of my life and then having the audacity to step in my ring, speak into my microphone, and ask me to release you from your contract? No chance, Max, is doing that. And then he says, you signed a deal with the devil and all the devil's deals are ironclad. I'm about to make your life a living hell. I own you, pig. So he just keeps calling him pig throughout this segment. Uh, Wardlow comes out and he starts beating these guys. Oh, so MJF's got security guards out there. He starts throwing around, but then eventually the it's about eight, ten security guards are spraying Wardlow. And then Max says, you don't work for AW, you work for MJF. MJF doesn't want you here no more. That means you're trespassing. He says he's going to keep paying them, but paying you to stay at home until you wind up the same day I signed you. An absolute nobody. So this is an interesting few. This is probably my favorite few we're going right now. MGF clearly the best business in the heel. It's not even close. Well, in this company and maybe in business between him and Roman. Yeah, so who knows how long he's going to be sitting at home for. So no Wardlow for about a few weeks. Unless he wants to show up in the crowd. Pay for a ticket and watch a show that way. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. All right, next up we got Adam Cole versus Jay Lethal. Okay, so Lethal locks into figure four. Adam Cole gets to the ropes. Cole hits a super kick. Lethal hits a cutter. He goes for lethal injection and then in midair, Adam Cole super kicks him. Adam Cole hits his uh, Panama Sunrise for an ear fall. Cole lowers the boom for the win. Solid match. Um, 
So Jay Lethal hasn't been, I don't think he's been on Dynamite since his debut, I think. And then he had that match with Ricky Starks on uh, Rampage a few weeks ago. But yeah, they barely use him. They should use him more uh, Dynamite. So it's just, just exposure on TV. He's one of their best wrestlers and he barely gets used. Seems like a wasted signing to me. All right, next up, we got Leila Hirsch versus Red Velvet. Change the picture. All right. Uh, yeah, so Leila Hirsch versus Red Velvet. Velvet hits a Hurricane Rana on the outside. Velvet hit double knee to Layla's back. Layla hit a German suplex for a two count. And she grabbed a weapon. It was like the turnbuckle, the thing that looks in the turnbuckle. Ref stops her. And then she's got another one in her trunk. She uses that and then she hits her with it for the win. This is just boring match. You don't really care about this. Not sure how many matches these two are going to have, but whatever, that's going to be continuing it. And then we got the main event, Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia from the Jericho Appreciation Appreciation Society, their debut match versus Dark Order facing John Silver and Alex Reynolds. So I think er earlier in the night they showed a picture of Jericho and John Silver like nearly 20 years ago. So is that why they're doing this match? He can face his hero, or John Silver can face his hero. Uh, it's just kind of stupid because didn't they, they do the same thing with MJF and CM Punk? And they showed that picture of them years ago. That's kind of a dumb reason to just can do this match. That match made sense to do it because that feud was actually good. And this was just random. Anyways, uh, Dark Order hit a double drop kick on Jericho. Dark Order hit a Brain Buster suicide dive combo on the outside. It's a pretty cool looking move on Jericho. And then, uh, Jericho, he, Jericho kicks the steps and then he falls down. So he's just pulling out like a Eddie Guerrero Latino heat move back in the day when he pretended to uh, get knocked out with the chair and ref would think the uh, other wrestler did it to him. So then 2.0 says uh, Dark Order did it. So the ref throws the rest of Dark Order out that was out there ringside. It was just uh, Jericho Appreciation Society now on the outside. John Silver hits a crossbody for a two count. Jericho hit a code breaker for an ear fall. And then Daniel Garcia grabbed the ref. Jericho hit a Reynolds with a bat, his bat, a baseball bat, Floyd. And then Garcia locked in the Scorpion death lock. And, and next Reynolds, Alex Reynolds taps out. This was in Gary of a match either. Just uh and then John Silver, he always has that spot where he gets the hot tag and he just cleans house and just runs over everybody. There was like four of them outside. But yeah, it wasn't that good of a match. Uh, yeah, the last, yeah, about the last half an hour, I don't know what happened. It just, it's just terrible that half hour, 40 minutes. That sucked. MDF always has the best promo. It's not even close. Like where that feud is going, CM Punk looks like he's going for the world title for against Hangman Adam Page. After Page and Cole have their rematch, and Page beats him again, and then uh, Brian and Moxley they got the new crew with William Regal, the Blackpool Combat Club, I think it's called. So we'll see what young guys are gonna add. One of them looks like could be Wheeler Yuta, and then. Um, yeah, so we'll see Wheeler Yuta or if they'll add another person. It's not Wheeler Yuta, then I don't know, they'll probably recruit somebody else. And then what else? Uh, oh, yeah, and then this Hardy's that was, that was the best match of the night. Hardy's with Sting, Darby on the eight men, Tenido tag match. Cool to see the, the Hardys again. Been going at it for, yeah, they've been there wrestling forever. Seems like 20, 30 years. 
Yeah, so I thought first hour was good. Last about half an hour, 40 minutes was just brutal. I don't know. It was an okay show. All right. See ya.